don't play basketball on concrete and bare feet. It will mess up your knees. Um, <laughs> if you can give us a short intro of who you are and how did you get to where you are in 30 seconds. I'm Jack Salt. Jack Salt, the acrobatic move. I'm from Auckland. I went to Westlake Boys High School. I ended up getting a scholarship to University of Virginia. 250 pound fifth year senior from Auckland, New Zealand. And I was there for five years, redshirted my first year and had an amazing time there, ups and downs. Uh, my time ended there with a national championship, which was very special. And then after Virginia, I had some personal ups and downs, but ended up playing professionally in New Zealand for Canterbury Rams and then Hawks Bay. And I also played in the AMBL with the Brisbane Bullets for a season. Who handed you your first basketball and why do you love the game? Oh, good question, man. Well, the reason I started playing was just for fun. I had a really good friend at the time that was amazing at basketball and we used to just play at lunchtime in primary school. So it really just happened out of fun and enjoyment. And I think for me, it was so natural. I was never forced to play basketball. So it was always just, yeah, I'm doing this because this is fun and it took me pretty far. What was one of the most memorable things that any of your coach ever said to you? It was actually when I was in high school, I had a coach, Lawrence, who is now, I forget what school he's at, but he was involved in the Breakers Academy. He was my under 17 coach. He's a legend. He coached Isaac Fotu, brought him into being an elite basketball player, but he did a pretty similar thing to me. And he pulled me aside one training and I was feeling pretty down on myself. And he said, no matter what Jack does, he is going to be great. And that really just stuck with me. And it's amazing. That was when I was probably 15 years old, 16 years old. And I, I think about it every now and again, and it really lifts my spirits up. So I appreciate him and a lot of other coaches I've had in my career that have helped me out. What was the biggest adversity you had to overcome? For me, it was after, well, Virginia, we lost in the uh, first round of the tournament to a 16 seed, and then the next year we won it. And Virginia! So that was pretty crazy. But for me personally, after Virginia, I actually didn't play basketball for two years. So I uh, got sick, I uh, got a bit thick, got a bit chunky, put on some weight. So for me, I lost that weight and then got injured again uh, with my first practice with my new team. So for me, being able to bounce back from two years out and play New Zealand League at quite a high level and then go over to play in the Bullets, that was something I'm pretty proud of. That's amazing. And a lot of people were curious when you announced your retirement from basketball. So. What's next for Jack Salt? Honestly, Davey, I'm still figuring that out, man. I've got a, I've got some great people. I'm based in Christchurch right now, and I've got some really um, cool people around me that are, I'm working a little bit at Stack. St. Andrew's here, just doing some coaching and some fitness, supervising of the fitness center. But I'm looking to get into some other stuff. And right now, just trying to enjoy this moment and just any opportunity that comes up, trying to make the most of it. What are you most exciting about 2023? I'm excited for learning a new skill set and being pushed out of my comfort zone in a new area that isn't basketball because you kind of get in a routine of basketball and you get you get comfortable. So for me, I'm excited to be a little bit uncomfortable and really see how far I can grow in my career post basketball. What is something that you have recently tried and experienced and enjoyed? I recently went to Queenstown for the first time and I feel like a fake Kiwi because everyone's like, yo, how have you not been to Queenstown? So for me, I, I love getting to travel and actually one of my good friends from America came to New Zealand and we checked out Auckland, Christchurch and Queenstown and progressively as we went further down, the weather got better. So it was great. Queenstown was just beautiful. So for me, uh, being in Queenstown for a couple of days, that was an amazing experience. Knowing what you know now, what are some of the advice would you give it to your younger self? For me, I really had a great basketball experience. I was able to play a high level at a young age. It was just being really grateful of the moment that you're in. Whether high school is your peak of your basketball, whether it's college, whether you go to pro, just really enjoy it because it is not, it's not going to be forever. And I know it's easy for the retired guy to say, to say that, but yeah, just no matter what level you're at, just enjoy being around friends because you will miss it. 
And I can think of, I've had great teams in professional, college, and high school. And I still think about the times I had with my high school team. And I treasure those a lot. So for any player out there, just enjoy hanging with your friends. Enjoy playing um, because it's a, it's a hell of a ride. What are some of the tips that you can give it to the young Kiwi Hoopers for them to stand out in some of the recruitment process? I mean, for me, I was very fortunate. I went to a Nike camp in China where I had some good exposure there. And then I played for the Tall Blacks at 17. So I was definitely very uh, lucky for that. But I would just say uh, as many national team exposures as you can, that, that definitely helps. And getting your grades in order, because as much as you want to go play basketball for the rest of your life, um, it's not going to happen. You're not going to play for the rest of your life. So just making sure first you have the grades to go over and hopefully you do go over, but if not, at least you'll have a backup, you'll have uni, maybe you go into another path. Work hard because you don't want to regret that you kind of were a little bit lazy during this time and you could have been putting that extra work in. So just, yeah, enjoy the whole process. And yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty fun journey. If you are a GM of a professional basketball team, you got given three players. Who would you either start, bench, or trade? So those three players I'm going to name, you probably know them. First player, Malcolm Blotnin. Second player, DeAndre Hunter. And Ty Jerome is the last player. Yeah, that's, that's messed up, man. I've done a good job of not swearing so far on this podcast. I wasn't going to say messed up. Um, no, nah, I mean, I, I love those guys. Malcolm is, he's the epitome of a leader. I've been around a lot of players. I mean, I put him and Mick of are the two leaders that I just, I was really astonished by. Uh, and then Ty and Ty and Dre, those guys are amazing. So, I mean, Malcolm's the best leader. So I'm going to go Malk. Um, I'm going to bench Dre. And the only reason I'm cutting Ty is just because he would always make fun of me when I was at Virginia. So I had enough of his So I just wouldn't want to hear from him. But I love Ty, but I just would get him on another team. Jack, all the best for the upcoming future. And um, thank you so much for uh, joining our pod today. Well, good. Thanks for having me on, Dave. We really appreciate it. I want to give a shout out to Kiwi Hoopers. Shout out to Kiwi Hoopers.